Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. The Jamoti Podcast is powered by Sideline Interactive. Sideline Interactive is the leading manufacturer for high quality, innovative scoring tables and LED video display boards that help coaches and schools bring more excitement to fans, create huge fundraising opportunities, and make their jobs easier. Visit sidelineinteractive.com to check out their amazing products. To the real question that you ask about culture, um, for me, culture really is how well aligned your behaviors and your beliefs are and the overall experience that everyone in your program has. Um, if you are preaching that these are our core values, you know, this is the way, these are our standards of excellence. This is the way we behave here. Then how well your team does those things on a, uh, on a regular basis is, is the definition of how, how high performing your culture is. Um, if there's a massive disconnect between what you preach and what you believe and what everyone on the team does, then you have a low performing culture. And mm. to me, that's what it is. It, it starts with getting crystal clear on what we consider important uh, on, you know, what is winning to us. And I'm not talking about the scoreboard, the way that we carry ourselves, the way that we behave in the classroom, in the community and on the court, you know, these are our core values. These are the things that we, as the coaching staff will do our very best to model every single day. And we have a very high standard of expectation that you all will do the same. And how well we all do that determines our culture. And I'm a believer that culture is, is the foundation to which the rest of the house is built. You know, you can have talented players and you can have brilliant X's and O's and a great strategy. But if you have a, a, a low performing culture, um, you're going to put a very low ceiling on what that team can achieve. Conversely, you can have mediocre talent. Uh, and yet you have an incredible culture built on open communication, safety, inclusivity. Yeah, players play their tails off. They have great attitudes, and you can absolutely out-index and outperform um, your talent on paper. And the teams that we see do this at You can the raise your game, level, coach. You can raise your game. And the teams we see doing this at the highest level are the ones that are able to do both consistently. And, you know, culture is is not necessarily just what you talk about. It's what you do. And there needs to be a alignment between those two. We talk about culture and core values every day and we live them and we model them every day. Those are going to be your winning programs. Even if your record is 500, I consider that a winning program. Those that do what they say they'll do and those that do what they believe, I will always label as a winning program, no matter what the wins and losses look like. Culture isn't just a hashtag. It's not just a t-shirt and it's not just a... a a slogan that you have in your locker room. And so I I'm convinced that, and unfortunately I think as a head coach, I've been the leader of programs where there was a disconnect between what we say we believe and what's actually being done in the businesses that you go speak to. How often do you get the feeling of this? They say that they believe in this, but man, just from either what I see or that time that I get to spend with them there, there is a disconnect. Yeah, it, it happens fairly regularly, but but I also think it happens very regularly on the sports side and with coaches no as well. There's yeah. almost yeah. always going to be a gap, um, but there's a few things. One, as leaders and as coaches, we have to be aware of the gap. Uh, and awareness is always the first step to improvement because we'll never fix something we're unaware of and we'll never improve something we're oblivious to. So a leader has to have the, the vulnerability and the self-awareness to say, there is a slight gap between what we preach and what's actually going on. And then the key is figuring out ways to systematically, incrementally, and progressively narrow that gap. Um, and, and this is not about perfection. I don't expect any uh, basketball yeah. coach yeah. or yes, or any high school program. And I certainly don't expect any corporate entity um, to be perfect. Life is not a perfect game. Basketball is not a perfect game. Business is not a perfect game, but it's a matter of, can we be aware of our opportunities for growth? Can be, we be aware of certain areas where we're not quite living up to the standard that we say? And then can we care enough about each other to hold each other accountable to raising that level and getting as close to that as we can? But I'm a big believer in being more inspired by progress instead of getting stifled by perfection. Uh, mistakes are going to happen. You're going to have even elite members of your team 
occasionally do or say something that's not in alignment with the core values. The key is, can you be aware of it? Can you care enough about them to hold them accountable? Can you make them aware of it? And can you see improvement moving forward? And that's why I especially think at the high school level, um, when kids make mistakes, which will be all of the time, uh, and they're going to make some boneheaded decisions on and off the court, are we using that as an opportunity for growth and an opportunity to teach a lesson instead of just kind of, you know, casting them away? A, a, a player takes three bad shots and you just bench them for the rest of the game. Yeah. Well, that might not be the way to actually teach them. You know, are they even aware that that's not a good shot? You know, they might think in their mind it's a good shot, which means as a coach, I failed to communicate to them what a good shot for them actually is. So I believe in in Jocko Willink's mantra of extreme ownership. Just you know, thinking, if, yeah, if yeah. Players are taking bad shots. That's usually more a reflection of the coach than it is yeah. of the players. And yeah. you have to ask yourself, how have I been complicit as a coach in allowing my players to take these bad shots? And what's a way that I can help them understand what a better shot would be? Coach, I, so a question I think I need a little bit of help with is, so awareness, you're right. Uh, TJ Rosine said that self-awareness is a superpower. And yes. and so, I mean, 10 years at Faith and doing my very, very best to be intentional with like zooming out in those moments and not be and, and, and recognizing teachable moments, taking them, uh, setting a culture, but trying to live it as well. So many times I think we 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 learn that maybe there's a disconnect in our culture when something negative happens and that's good like obviously don't don't be blind to uh you know a disconnect or or um, an issue that comes up in your program but i guess maybe the, the idea is there is no perfect like your point i got to maybe give myself a pass there's no perfect culture there's no perfect environment we're all human beings that are flawed and things are going to come up but how how do you how do you see maybe a disconnect in your culture and your program, maybe with parents, maybe with players and, and try to fix that problem before, before the issue hits. Like, I don't know. I, I I had some things happen this season that coached full transparency. I just didn't see it coming. Like I thought we were, I thought we were all moving along and, and not like head in the sand kind of thinking. And, but then man, something happened that, Oh, we're, we're not on the same page. How do you how do you be so self-aware that you can see some of the things happen but are coming before they happen? So basically, we're all looking at the same thing, but we're looking at it from a variety of different perspectives. And one way that we heighten self-awareness is to try to get as many different perspectives as we can. So keep in mind, as a head coach of a basketball team, uh, through no fault of your own, you're only going to see the world through your own eyes and your own lens. Mm -hmm. You're seeing it from the position on the org chart as the CEO or the head coach of the team. Well, you better believe that your third assistant sees the world a little differently than you do. You better believe your starting point guard sees the world differently than you do. Your 15th man sees the world differently than do you do. Your athletic director, your principal, all of these people see the same thing slightly differently. And part of being aware is intentionally soliciting their perspective and their point of view. Uh, because whatever it was that you were referencing that you said happened this past season, there's a chance somebody else in the program kind of saw that coming, mm. but you did it. And this doesn't mean that 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 anyone was trying to hide anything from you. It's just a matter of whether we create a culture of openness where fe people feel safe to share um, their perspective, even if it's going to go against or rub against what it is that you believe. Um, and And I think we can be very proactive in that. You know, when I was at DeMatha and I worked for Mike Jones, who's one of the best high school coaches I've ever had a chance uh, to meet, one of the best leaders I've ever met, he would do an exercise before every game that would basically be as follows. All right, we've scouted this team that we're going to play on Friday. Um, we've we've looked at their personnel. We've looked at their tendencies. We know what sets they run. We've had two really good days of practice where we're not only focusing on what we do well, but we're paying attention to the things that they may throw at us. And then the very last thing he would do was he would ask the other assistant coaches, um, I think we're in a good position to be successful tomorrow. I, I feel very confident, but let's just say I have a crystal ball and it says that we actually lose tomorrow. 
what is the number one reason that you think we would lose if we were to lose tomorrow? Mm. And one of the coaches might say, you know, um, they're a little bit bigger than us and we didn't box out. We got beat on the boards. Or another one would say, you know, we we didn't effectively make the extra pass when they were trapping in their half court trapping defense. You know, they would each say something that they think could be the reason that we would lose. And then Coach Jones would say, perfect. In our last practice and shoot around, we're going to address each of those things. Because if we lose tomorrow, it is not going to be for a reason that we've already established could be a reason that we'll lose. It's going to have to be something that surprises us. So he would be very proactive in asking what could undermine our ability to win the game. And let's address those things now. So if we lose tomorrow, it's not going to be because we didn't box out and it's not going to be because we didn't make the extra pass out of a trap. It's going to be for something that we really didn't see coming. And and there's a lot of ways that we can kind of apply that mindset yeah. to a lot of different areas of our life. Now, that's a great activity and definitely one that I'm going to borrow. One coach said never to call it stealing. That you're, yes. We're borrowing from each other. But uh, I definitely borrow that. How much? So I believe in an open door policy, especially, I mean, with players. But I tell my parents that, too. They don't always take advantage of that, which maybe that's a self-awareness thing. Like, I'm saying it, but do they really believe? that they can come in and be heard and that, that I'll, I'll, I'll welcome that. That's a, that's a, something to think about, but is there, is there too much? Is there too much access, too much, you know, openness? I don't know. I think that's up for each coach to, yeah. to decide, but keep in mind too, we hear this all the time. And, and I've, I've said this to folks in the business world in open door policy. It doesn't mean that it's a one way door. Like if that door is open, that means you're allowed to walk out of that door and go visit a player at his locker, uh, you know, chat with a parent in the car after after practice, uh, go down to your AD or your principal's office and actually ask them a question, you know, walk over to the office next to you and talk to one of your assistants. So it's not about just saying, I expect everyone to come to me to share. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we have to be more proactive in going and reaching out to them and just saying, hey, I've got this on my mind. I know we're preparing for this game on Friday, You know, talking to one of your assistants. W what is it that you see? Or I noticed that we're having a little issue with, with Jimmy. You know, He seems to have kind of a, a bad attitude and he's been in a little funk. I can't quite figure out what's going on in his head. Is there anything that you know? Or who on the team has the best relationship with Jimmy? Maybe we can talk to that player instead. Um, so yeah, I think as coaches, I love an open door policy, but just remember that it is a two-way door and we have to be just as proactive in reaching out to others as we would expect them to be of us. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.